Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Connect Civilians. So in this lecture we are going to design a simply supported doubly reinforced beam as per IR code 456-2000 where the span length is uh, 10 meter. So here we are going to see the beam design whose span length is up to 10 meter. Okay. So these are the initial values you have to fill that is for the live load calculation or if you are designing in stead or you are calculating for stead so this will be your dead load okay the wall load that is coming on the beam okay so you have to mention for the calculation or either if you know the value you can directly insert the value okay but here we are going to calculate height of the floor above so here you have to fill the value uh, that is what height of the floor is present above that beam okay so our is 3.5 so we are going to be 3.5 okay now here you have to fill your beam depth that is the above beam depth that is coming about the wall okay so you have to detect this width okay so our above uh, beam width is 0 0.4 that is 400 mm say if if you don't know the value you can go with the zero also that will be safe the density of brick so it is 20 if you are using the light weight then it will vary from 10 to 12 okay density of plaster is 22 here we are taking thickness of the block work is 150 mm this will be okay thickness of the plaster so this thickness will be your inner and outer plaster for outer we are taking 24 and for inner we are going to take as 12 mm so you can do as 12 for inner calculation or 24 for outer or according to your side condition okay so we are going with both the inner and outer values okay so it is 36 so our total udl that is acting on the beam is calculated as 12.073 now the dimension calculation so here you have to provide the wall thickness okay so this will be your column one end I will show you in the figure what it is so this will be your wall thickness on left side and on the right side so either it is a column or a wall so you have to provide the width of that section okay so for left it is 230 that is column width is 230 column or wall width and for column 2 it is also 230 this will be okay 230 Clear span is 5.5 meter. So what is the clear span? This is the clear span between two columns. Okay. So it is 5.5 meter. Here 5.5 is okay. Live load will be 12.072. So it is taken from this. So it will automatically taken. Or you can also insert it manually if you are not using this calculation of that uh, wall load. So here it is okay 12.073 FCK. So we are going to use the grade of complete is as uh, 25 M25. So it is okay. FY main. So for main one we are going to take the FY as 530 the tensile strength. This brown bar is the main bar and this blue bar is your stirrups. And for stirrups we are going to take FE415. Okay. Diameter of bar for compression zone. So, where is the compression? Where is the tension zone? This top is your compression, and this bottom is your tension zone. Okay. So, you are, can insert your diameter. So, what diameter of bar you are, are going to use for the design? If it will not pass, so I, either we can increase the depth or the die of the bar. Okay. 
third will depend also on the availability of our market. What type of bar in, is present in our area? Okay. For a small town, uh, there is a condition that uh, not all the bar sizes is available. So that's why you can also increase the depth of the beam. So die out the bar for compression zone as 12 mm. That is the top bars. And for bottom, it is we are going to take as 16 mm. Should be okay. Die out bar for shear reinforcement. Okay, here it is shear reinforcement. That is the stirrups. So we are going to take as 10 meter, 10 mm. Sorry. So this will be safe. Okay. Factor of safety will be. You can also copy the 8 mm. Okay. Factor of safety will be. We are going to take as 1.5. So this Excel sheet uh, will not uh, design the beam as for well, the seismic also. So in that in that case you can increase the factor of safety. Okay, up to two to two point five. Okay. Seismic analysis is important so that in that case you can increase the factor of safety. That is also equivalent to your seismic. Okay. So either you can check from the your design if you are designing the whole building in any software that is that or it have, so you can get the approximate approximate value for the factor of safety or the uh, load that is coming. So according to that you can increase the factor of safety here. Okay, or so width of the beam. So here you have to provide the width of the beam. Okay, so L by 12 for continuous beam section. So this will be not important. This will be if you are using continuous beam. Okay, this will be okay. So use continuous or simply supporter here. You don't have to change any boxes here. All the condition will be present. That is cantilever, simply supported, continuous. But this will help. This Excel sheet will help you to design the simply supported doubly reinforced beam only. Okay, it will, if you are going to continue, that will show you the effective depth or effective span calculation only here. So if you are going to check that is steel also, so you you only use the simply supported. This will help you to design the simply supported beam only for uh, continuous beam. I will also upload the video in a in our coming lectures, okay. Here, yeah, this will be okay. Or if you want to check your effective span, so you can also check from all the conditions for design consideration. Use simply supported only. So, span the effective ratio is coming as 20, okay. So, this is taken from IS code. 456 on clause 23.2.1 for span up to 10 meter. Okay, you can also check from the code. I am uh, going to, I am also commented the uh, clause from where we have taken. Okay, you can check it from here also. Effective depth calculation is 275, it is coming. So, effective depth we have to consider. So, it is coming at 275, so you can. Take as 275, or you can do take larger value than this. Okay, so I'm going with 325. You can go with also 300 if you will see that was going to pass or not. So according to that, you can change. So I'm going with 325. So our effective power at tension and compression is so we are going to take the cover. So it is 25 and 25 we are going to take you can change also according to your exposure conditions okay so total depth of the beam is coming as 350 self fit of the beam is 1.96875 and total load is coming as total load is the total self weight plus the live load or dead load okay and ultimate load so it is multiplied by factor of safety 
is coming as 21.0611 kN per meter. Okay. So either you can use this or you can also use wrong value if you want. If you know the ultimate load that is coming, so you can directly insert that value here. So it will also calculate. Okay. Uh, if you if you don't have any value, so please change it to zero. Okay. Zero. If you don't do that, so it will design as per your uh, given value that is present here. Okay. It will not take this value. So if you if you are calculating with these values, so you make it as zero. Okay. And if you have the ultimate load, so you can insert here. And our effect is one is coming as 5.73. Now our design bending moment calculation. So it is coming at 86.44 kilonewton meter. Okay. So it is as per IS 4456. You don't have to worry. You can check from the code or match it from the code also. Yes, our stress initial is 2 into 25 newton per mm square. Our axial mass. That is limiting depth of neutral axis is coming as 0.46 into small d. Okay. Whose value is 148. Okay. So it is uh, given on I square 456 page 70. Okay. I'm not going to check all the value from the code here. We have mentioned you can also you can okay. And the moment of resistance for balance section is coming as 0.133 FCK BD square. So our effective depth calculated is coming as 340 and we have provided as how much we have provided? We have provided as 325. Okay. So our initial effective depth that we have got from the uh, dimension calculation as 275. But here as per design moment calculation bending moment calculation here effective depth is coming at 340 okay so if you have taken the effective depth less than 340 so it will show you that increase the effective depth in G22 or design as over reinforced section okay so over reinforced section what will happen it will design as per doubly reinforced that's why I am saying you so we have already done the singly reinforced beam. In singly reinforced, I will repeat it. Only the bottom bar is provided, not in compression bar is provided. Okay. In compression zone, the bar was not provided. In tension zone, only bar was provided. Only the top bar is provided to support the stirrups. Okay. And in doubly reinforced beam, both the tension and compression zone we have to give. Okay. So here this will be okay. As our D small d provided is 325 okay and our d calculated 340 that's why it is saying you increase the effective depth or design as or reinforced section okay so we are going to design as the or reinforced section for doubly reinforced beam okay and if you increase the depth so the excel sheet that we have given uh, i've already uploaded for singly reinforced beam you have to Use that especially for the design of single reinforcement. Okay, but here this will be okay. So we are going to design as poor reinforced section as W reinforced beam. So our MU limit is coming as 78.86, which is less than our design bending moment. Okay. So our MU2 is coming as 10 point. 5.8. Now compression reinforcement calculation that is the top bar reinforcement calculation. So here our strain stress in strain curve value is taken. So where is the stress stress curve? Here it is given our I score 456 2000. Okay, this will be your present on code also. You can check from there also. Okay. For cold foam bar steel, this will be your graph. So this graph will help you to find the value if you want to insert it manually. Okay. So our 
stress stress curve that is strain value is coming at 0.0029 so here it is 0.002 so 9 will come around here 0.003 so it will come nearby here and your curve is going up, up like this okay and for the design of the compression bar on sp16 page number 12 it is given okay so you have to multiply it by 0.85 into the our strain curve okay that is uh, sorry our fi mean bar steel so this is calculated here on page number 72 of 38.123a cold form work deform bar so formula was given fi by divided by 1.15 curve so we have to use okay this curve we have to use to find the value okay so our value is coming 0.0029 and this will be a curve so here from here value will be taken and this curve will be go like this and this will match here for fy by 1.15 so this will range as 0.85 fy so here the same value we have taken okay so if this value will be less so it will go straight if you are not using this curve okay fy we have to use this curve fy by 1.15 so if you value 0.001 so here this will go up and it will match here yeah, so minimum you have to use 0.8 fy okay for fy by 1.15 so you have to use this fy by 1.15 okay so here that same thing we have taken 0.85 into fy okay so our value is coming as 425 so this is present on sp16 SP okay On page number 12 you can check from there also so area of steel required is coming as 59 mm for compression zone okay on page number uh, 96 section g 1.2 year two. if you want to see you can check for the formula okay so our ASP main minimum in beam is coming as 124 mm so here clause I have already provided all the clauses you can check from the clause also from IS code 456 26.5.1.1 page 43 ST minimum in beam okay so ST maximum is taken as 3 point sorry 3150 area of steel uh, bar provided is 1.1 or sorry uh, 113 mm for main bar of 6 uh, 12 mm, mm in compression zone okay so number of bar is required as one so minimum you have to provide two so i have given the number of bar as two okay if you are if you will provide one bar it will show you not safe so you have to increase again okay so this two boxes you have to check it will show you safe or not okay only if you show you save then this will bar that you have provided will be okay okay now for tension the important calculation here if you will go so ast1 and ast2 both the value we have to take it is present in sp16 page number 12 and sp16 on page number 36 96 sorry okay So for EST2 you can check from IS code also, IS code 456, okay. So it is 687 and 58 area of steel required in tension zone will be 745, okay. And ST minimum for 
of our tension zone in beam is 124 and maximum is 3150. So area of steel bar provided will be for tension we have taken the dia of bar as 16, so it is 201. The so number of bar required is coming as 4. So we have taken as 4. That will be safe also. If it will show you not safe or you have taken 3, what you have to do? You have to increase the bar. Okay. Okay, so this will be okay right now. So number of required bar is 4. We have provided 4. Number of area bar provided will be coming as 804. So here this will be okay. So what bar we have provided? We have provided the bar for compression zone as Two number of bar for 12 mm at top and for tension that is bottom. Four number of bar at 15 mm high. So here also it will show you from the figure. Two number of bar of 12 mm at top and four number at 16 mm at bottom. Okay. Don't uh, go on number of bar that is shown here. Just use the values. Okay. So clear cover and all the value you have to check. Okay. So now we are going to check the for the shear reinforcement. So here are the values that is factored shear force is coming as 57.9 to nominal shear force is coming as 0.79. The formula will be given on growth number 40.1 page 72 I is code 456 percent of tension reinforcement is coming as 1.099 and design. So this design shear strength is calculated from this interpolation value from here. Okay, you have to do the interpolation for the calculation of the design shear strength. Okay, so it is uh, given on page number 73 of IS code 456 table 19. So I will show you this table. Okay, page number on page number. 73 okay. so it will come here by 53 okay. so it will on table 90 this will be table 90 okay so here our percent of tension reinforcement is coming at 1.09 and that is 1.1 okay here so this value is taken from this table okay 1.1 now here you have to check where your 1.1 is coming and what grade of concrete you have provided so here we have provided m m25 i think so yeah here see grade of concrete is m25 fck okay this will be fck is your grade of concrete so M25 so 1.1 is our percentage and M25 the grade M25 this this and 1.1 so it will less than Okay, so here you have to change 1.15. Okay, and one is the top value, and 1.15 is the bottom value, and this 1.1 is taken from here from this table, it is less than 1.15. Okay, and our grade will be. So for M25 it is 0.29. Okay, we can change 0.29. So we don't know the value, so you can also directly go for lesser value. Okay. For less than 
junction okay that is nearby column 1 and column 2 you can decrease the spacing up to 100 mm if you want okay for this ductile detailing uh, is code or is code 13920 will guide you to decrease the spacing on both the ends of the beam okay up to 100 mm up to l by 3 or l by 4 okay and this will be okay this will be safe here so we have done the design of our doubly reinforced beam as per is code 4562000 where the span is up to 10 meter okay so you i will also upload the design calculation with the same procedure only where the span or our beam is greater than 10 meter value will be taken okay so that will also be same for all the values just we have to check that either if you are using the beam design greater than 10 meter you can use this excel sheet for, uh, for the design or if your span is less than 10 meter you can use this excel sheet for the design okay so if you like this video please do subscribe to my channel thank you